Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a purchase order. So to get started, let's look at the entire screen just so that you can get acclimated. So at the top of the screen, you can see that we are on the purchase order entry screen. If you click on purchases, you can see in the purchases workspace under transactions, we have purchase orders. Now this will bring up the list of purchase orders that you have in the system, whereas this will create a new purchase order. And that's where we're at right now on a new purchase order screen. At the top, you have the ability to delete a purchase order or add a new one if you have an existing record open. So you could look up an existing purchase order, copy it, create a brand new one, and then hit paste. Or you can save a purchase order as a template. If it's something that you order all the time, you can build a nice purchase order with all the details and then save it as a template. You could later retrieve it right here in this menu. Notice the menus over here on the right. This gives you all the available options based on the purchase order and its status. Now, additionally, what you can do with any of these menu options is you can make them a favorite and they'll appear up here. Also, you could see up here that there's additional options such as creating activities, creating notes, attaching files. So let's get started with our purchase order creation. So at the top of the screen, you could see we're on type normal. Today, we're going to create a normal type order, but you can also have dropship type orders. Those are linked from sales orders. We integrate with our project accounting, so you can have project dropship orders. So that is product comes in from vendors and is associated with a specific project. We have blanket orders where you get a certain contract with a vendor of certain quantities and certain prices and you draw down on that blanket order until such time where all the quantities are completed. And then standard purchase orders, where it's a template from a vendor, very much like a blanket, except it never closes and there's no expiration date, unlike a blanket order. So a normal order we're going to create. We have our date here that defaults to today. We have a delivery date from the vendor. We can change that based on the vendor's promise. We'll select the vendor here, typing in a few letters of the vendor's name. We'll do a lookup. Or you can click on this button and get more of a context browser where you can do certain things like create filters. You can scroll over, get more information about the vendor and even click on any column and filter by it or sort by it. So again, what we're going to do here is type a few letters of go to vendor, which comes up. This right here is the vendor location to where that we're going to receive these items. Normally we select main here, but you may add a few different locations and then you can select them here. The owner of the purchase order is whoever's logged in. So this is your purchasing rep. And if you're using multi-currency, you can see that setting here if the vendor set up for it. And vendor reference is essentially if we're going to convert this directly to an AP bill. So now below we have all these tabs. The first and most important tab is what items are we ordering? So you can go down and click here, anywhere here, and use your tab key and start to type in items that you're going to order. So once again, you can type a few letters this way. You can tab over, if you use the down arrow, it'll create a new line. The other thing you could do is you can click the magnifying glass. And once again, just like the vendors we saw before, you can get a more detailed list of items, see the pricing, see the measures and all sorts of different columns. The other thing you can do is you can click on add items. And this is kind of an order guide. It shows the items that you've historically purchased from the vendor. You can see that checkbox here by default. So what you could do here is you can select the items. So we're going to order five of them to be delivered to our retail location. And we're going to order three of these Legos to our wholesale location. And once again, you can continue on throughout the different items. This 
automatically selects the quantity with the checkbox here. And additionally, you can type in a few keywords of that item and you'll notice the specific item or the description of the item comes up. And once again, you can put in the quantity, which will check this. So now we'll add and close. And you could see all of the items we selected for that order guide. And notice the different warehouses that they will be delivered to. But for the purposes of this purchase order, we're gonna delete the retail items. So we only have these two items going to one warehouse. That'll set up for another demo later on. So now again, at the top of the screen, you notice save and you notice save and close. We'll click the save button here. And you'll notice that Acumatica is giving us an error message because when we first selected this item, we never added a quantity to it. We simply added it and then I tabbed down and went to another line, but we didn't put a quantity in here. So let's put in a quantity and we'll hit the save button again. Now you'll notice the unit cost here. These unit costs typically configured in Acumatica, the default setting is these unit costs come in from the last purchase order, but there's a preference there. You can have that last cost get updated either from the last purchase order or from the last time an accounts payable bill was released. So if we understand the workflow here, this is a purchase order. It will be received into stock and later it'll be matched to an accounts payable bill, which will be posted into the system to hit our accounts payable so that we can pay it back to the vendor. Now, when we post that bill or release it in Acumatica, that will update the vendor's cost for this item. And that's where we're getting this price here. Now, there's a lot of different tabs here and some of them may be applicable to your business and some may not. For example, taxes. If you're in the US, typically you're not going to track taxes. However, if you're buying merchandise from a vendor internationally, you may have value added taxes and those can show up here. Our shipping tab gives us the ability to ship to our specific branch. I'm logged in to the products wholesale, which has an address. Therefore, it'll ship it to that particular address. These are the kinds of settings you typically don't change on the fly, but you can. Here is the ability to ship it to a customer. This automatically gets pre-filled when you're doing a dropship, when you're creating a dropship from a sales order. But you can also select warehouse or vendor shipping locations. And notice below, despite whatever setting you have here, you have the ability to override the attention information and the address information simply by checking one of these boxes. You can select your on board point or your delivery method, depending upon what relationship and what understanding you have with the vendor. Our vendor info is here. This is the contact information. This will pull from the vendor's default as well as the terms. So the terms can be changed. It might be a different order and maybe the vendor's requiring different types of terms. So you can change that here. If you're the purchasing rep and you get to that level of negotiation, then you might be party to the terms and that entire discussion. But with other companies, purchasing reps might not deal with any of the financial part of working with the vendor. And to that point, you can change the security as to whether or not certain people can make these changes. You can also prepay for a purchase order, which we'll get to in a little bit. Any kind of vendor discounts, if the vendor has a discount going, we can pick up the discount code. It might be an overall discount of maybe 10% for the entire document, or you can have discounts at the line level. And you can define those either from a global standpoint with Acumatica specific to the vendor, specific to the line item, or as I mentioned, you can have a global discount and it all depends on whether or not your vendor supports it. Here's where we can find our prepayments. And if you're using project accounting or construction, here's your change orders as well as your compliance. Compliance meaning maybe this vendor, we order from them, 
but we're waiting on a certificate of compliance. Maybe it's a food vendor and we're waiting for them to submit their latest FDA approval or something along those lines. Whatever it is, we maybe require that, but this you'll find in construction. In the other tab, we have order totals, billing information, so unbilled quantity, for example, the vendor hasn't yet sent us a bill and we haven't entered it yet. So that, of course, is maximized to the quantities on this document because, of course, we haven't gotten there yet. We have preferences for the requirements of this purchase order. Do we require printing it? Do we require emailing it before this is completed? So you can define those preferences typically in the vendor's profile. Retainage is also part of construction, and here's your VAT totals, assuming you're using taxes for this particular vendor. So now that this purchase order is created and we've saved it, you'll notice there's a hold status. The hold status allows us to continue to make changes to the purchase order. In order to activate this purchase order and get it out to the vendor, we remove the hold. And in doing so, Acumatica locks down the purchase order so we can't make changes. The reason for that is because once you submit the purchase order to the vendor, you don't want that purchase order to be a moving target. Now, certainly you can put this purchase order back on hold, but at least if you do so, you either A, have the rights, and B, certainly you understand that you've contacted the vendor and you've made the appropriate changes with them. They're aware of these changes that you're making on the purchase order. The last thing you want is a discrepancy between what the vendor understands and what you end up receiving into the warehouse. Now that we've taken it off hold, what you'll notice in the menu is a number of different options have popped up. The most typical important option is email the purchase order. So assuming we're okay with this purchase order, everything looks right, we took it off hold, now we have the ability to email the purchase order. And you can do that. And what that'll do is it'll email it hands off. So meaning that it'll use the vendor's email address. It'll submit the purchase order as a PDF attachment in the email. And you can see that here. If we click on activities, this shows all the activities for this purchase order. If we open it up. You can see the email composition window. You can see who it's going to. Again, this comes from the vendor's email address. You can see the automated email. You can change these templates in the system. Again, this is hands off. We didn't type this, hold it from the template. You can also see the status of the email. And notice at the top of the screen, we can see the purchase order PDF that was attached. That's the form that went out to the vendor. And that's one way you can do it. But if we close this, go back to our menu, we can also print the purchase order. So assuming you print purchase orders and maybe send them manually, maybe through a fax, you can do that. Here's a picture of the purchase order form. This is what it looks like before any modifications. It brings your logo in and everything. And you could see the quantities, the details. You could see who it's being sent to, who it's being delivered to, and the totals at the bottom. And at this point, you can print it to a printer or you can hit the send button and you can also email it out from here. The difference being, I have the ability to change who it's being emailed to, I can change the subject, and I can change anything in the body of the email here. Notice the files, there's still a PDF attachment of this purchase order form, exactly the way it looks. And additionally, you can also include somebody CC'd, somebody blind CC'd to this email, but you can send it as well. Now, if we go back and we refresh, notice we have two activities because we sent the email twice, just a different way of sending it. Also notice here, if this is something where the vendor requires a prepayment, we can set those terms accordingly, but we have the ability to create a prepayment request. And what Acumatica does is it brings up a bills and adjustments screen with a type prepayment. And essentially it creates this because then we could pay this prepayment request. We won't go into details on this, look for our other videos on it, but this is how you would do it. And this will get associated to the purchase order 
so that when the bill is finally created, this prepayment will automatically offset that bill. Lastly, you'll notice our side panel here. So this shows us the preferred vendor items, the items that this vendor normally sells to us. Now we saw it before under add items, but you can see it in a split view here using this side panel. Additionally, we can click on vendor details. And if we have the rights, it will bring up this vendor's AP history. And it'll show by default any bills that are outstanding. We could see that here. You take the bill and then there's a debit adjustment, a credit to the vendor. And you could see our total balance is $400. And this might be helpful to purchasing reps again, so that they can see when they're negotiating with a vendor, if they say, oh, well, you owe a certain amount of money, you can verify that and also see if it's been updated in your system and if a payment's going out. To see if a payment's going out, you can check off this show all documents and now you can see payments. Payments typically have a zero balance because they're completely applied to a, an AP bill. And you can tell them that, hey, I have a check 2557 for $4,500 that just went out in November. So you should have that. And that'll help the purchasing rep continue their negotiations with the vendor and allow this purchase order to get released so it doesn't hold up anything. Additionally, we have another side panel which shows you any receipt lines from the purchase order. This is to say that when we're looking at the purchase order, understanding whether any quantities have been received and their details, we can see that from here. Additionally, if we scroll over to the right, you can see quantity on receipts. Because it's a new purchase order and because it's open, we know that this is a fresh purchase order and we know that there's no quantities received, but you can see that at the line item here. So that's how we create a purchase order. That's how we create a prepayment request. That's how we email out the purchase order. The differences between keeping the purchase order on hold and removing the hold so that it now is open. We can track our activities up here. We can drag and drop any files to this top here. I talked to you about the notes. You can add notes at the top. And additionally, you'll also note that all these line items, we can add notes here. And you'll notice that even though I can't make changes to the body of the purchase order or to the lines, I can add notes. And you'll notice that right here. See, there's a note here. It's been colored in for us, so we know it's there. And there's a note at the header. Keep in mind that Acumatica's typical purchase order printout will show this note as well as this note. Now, if you modify it, you can take that out. But if we print the purchase order again, notice at the bottom, you can see the purchase order note. And on the line, you can see the line note. Now, if you want to use the notes for internal information, you'll want to modify this report and pull out this field so it doesn't print those notes. So that's Purchase Orders 101. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions about this or anything else Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We love to hear from you. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to get notified on all the latest videos. Thanks again and have a great day.